Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. This is an unusual review in that I won't be able to do a writing sample. Today's video is a first impressions only of the Waterman Karen. Ever since my friend Ron gifted me his dad's 1970s Schaefer Targa with his incredibly beautiful inlaid 14 karat gold nib, I've had my spidey senses tuned for pens with inlaid nibs equally as gorgeous as this one. Ooh, my spider sense is tingling. If you know what I'm talking about. I researched the Schaefer PFM, or Pen for Men, and the Schaefer Legacy 1 and 2, all no longer made by Schaefer. My search led me to this Pilot E95S with its gorgeous 14 karat gold inlaid nib and sleek, elegant design. Now easily one of my top three pens, a gift from my wife last Christmas. I also discovered the Waterman Karen. I saw images of them online and watched various YouTube reviews. I heard raves about its performance and its beauty is beyond reproach. Price, however, was beyond my pocketbook. So it remained a grail dream. Until last week, when a pen friend, ink extraordinary entrepreneur, and distributor of Robert Oster and KWZ Inks at Bauer Inks in Toronto, Claudia Astrakiza, sent me a message with a link to an Amazon sale. A Waterman Karen fine point in my favorite amber finish was available for less than half the usual price. I bought it within a minute of receiving her note and had it in my hands within 48 hours. Thanks, Claudia, for helping me realize this grail dream. Waterman offers a free nib swap service. If the pen's nib and section are in pristine condition and it has never been inked, they will swap your nib for any of the available nib sizes for that model. The Corin is available with extra fine, fine, medium, broad, and oblique broad nib options. I wanted at least a medium. The interesting thing is that the medium version is almost $90 Canadian more than the fine nib. With the free nib exchange, I'm getting a medium Waterman Karen for 126 bucks Canadian, or the equivalent of $92 US. All I had to do was register with Waterman online, which incidentally extends my warranty another two years to five years in total. I contacted them through their website and asked about the nib exchange. I received a very nice note part boilerplate, part original correspondence from a customer service representative named Joanne. Joanne listed the steps I needed to take to get the nib exchange. I needed to send her my address, a photo of the pen showing the nib with my case number, handwritten beside it, a copy of my bill of sale, which was my Amazon invoice. I quickly did all those things and almost instantly, Joanne sent me an email with an attached prepaid UPS shipping label. She asked that I package the entire pen in bubble wrap without the box and take it to my local UPS shipping location for transport to France. I'm a bit trepidatious about sending this gorgeous pen across the sea in bubble wrap, but the entire process is insured. I'm hoping this process will not take as long as getting my Moonman T2, which was three months, or my Leonardo Momento Zero, which is now going on five weeks. In the meantime, I need to fill my first impressions and show you some close-ups of this amazing fountain pen right now. So here we go with the unboxing of this Grail pen. Of course, Amazon Prime. You don't have to wait three months for it to arrive. So well, I might have to cut this. There we go. And it comes in this beautiful sleeve. What's so beautiful about it? Well, it's white and it has gold lettering, so that's beautiful. Karen Amber. And the sleeve comes off. And there's our Waterman box. This is very nice finish. Waterman, of course, in gold. And this wavy pattern. I don't know whether all Watermans, this is my first Waterman, but I don't know whether all Watermans come in this kind of a box or not. But it certainly is with keeping with the nautical theme of this Karen, which we will discuss. And there's the hexagon with the Waterman logo. 
and we open up the case to reveal there it is wow waterman plush case there's the fountain pen It's uh, relatively heavy, but not too heavy for a metal pen. That finish. You'll have to forgive the pounding over my head. People are preparing for my daughter's wedding tomorrow. I'm prepared with my fountain pen because I've got to write a toast to the bride. Maybe I can't write it with this pen because I'm going to be sending this pen away. We'll look at this in more detail. I'm not going to do a full review of this. Oh, my goodness. 18 karat gold. This is an F fine nib. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh. Can I say? We'll go over this in more detail later after my daughter gets married, and then I'll have to send it off back to France and get that nib exchanged for a, a medium or broad. And let's just look at that material. This amber lacquer looks like the hull of a mahogany speedboat to me. And of course, the and looks like the tail of a yacht and that nib looks like a spinnaker sail to me let's look in the box we have a single cartridge waterman cartridge and a waterman brochure in many languages I still can't believe I got this for this price. Thank you, Claudia. So here is my gorgeous new Waterman Karen. This is not the most expensive pen I purchased, but it is easily the most elegant. Just look at this pen. What I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this fountain pen, show some size comparisons and some measurements, and I will refrain from doing a writing sample. I will save that portion until the pen returns from France. In the meantime, my YouTube friends, please comment below what you think, what ink I should put in it when it gets back from France. I'll show some available possibilities in a moment, but feel free to make some suggestions of inks I don't have, as I'm sure I'll have some time to get ink while I'm waiting for this yacht to cross the ocean. Hey, my buddy, over there! I want to go over there! And I'm driving. In fact, I think I'll start a poll on my community tab and let you folks vote on what ink should go into this beauty. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you'll get a notification of the poll. And please stay tuned later on when I'll discuss what I like and what I don't like so much about this pen, even before putting nib to paper. Now let's take a close look at this fountain pen. Of course, the name Karen, with the accent grave, means hull in French, and names the overall theme of the design of this pen, a yacht or a sailboat. Waterman is one of the oldest fountain pen companies in the world, having patented their first fountain pen in 1884 in New York. There were actually two Watermans, and one in France, uh, where some pens were manufactured starting in 1926. Um, and then the American New York version went bankrupt, and the France version took over complete control of the company. The pen claims many innovations in fountain pen technology, including the ink cartridge in 1927. The Karen dates from 1997, and Waterman's marketing hype leaves no doubt about the nautical inspiration for this pen's design. Quote, The Karen rides the crest of the innovation wave, taking inspiration from luxury boat design, 
the result is our most distinguished example of pioneering vision. Crafted in noble, which I assume they mean gold, materials, with an artist's attention to detail, its pure fluid curves conjure up the sleekest lines of a leisure cruiser or the billowing sails of a luxury yacht. Set sail for the adventure of a lifetime, unquote. Well, I'm all sails set for this adventure, and this little waterman brochure welcomes me to the world of watermen with Welcome, Bienvenue, Welcomen. Welcome, bienvenue, welcome, come on in. Since I saw this model about a year ago, I've been attracted to this amber version specifically. While I was restoring my friend Ron's father's 1970s Schaefer Targa, I was researching the really cool finish on it. It's called brown ronce, and a ronce is a type of lacquer applied over metal, which the French call lac. That's L-A-Q-U-E, lac. This Karen has the same kind of ronce finish, but with a lot more depth. This finish also reminds me of the hull of a vintage mahogany-hulled inboard speedboat. That, in addition to the very elegant slope of the stern and the billowing sails of the spinnaker nib, really give me the impression of nautical luxury and old-school class. Overall, the pen is torpedo-shaped and fairly slender. The cap tapers up from the narrow point to a narrow gold-plated cap band that has Waterman on one side and France engraved on the other. The clip is another elegant nautical design element with its swooping wave-like curves. It also has the trademark oval opening in the center of it, the Waterman logo, that W double check in a hexagon, and it is also spring loaded into the cap, which is a really, really nice feature and is very springy and very usable. From the cap band, the barrel tapers down smoothly to the remarkable end finial. This gold-plated beveled oval with the black plastic dot in the center is as eye-catching as what's inside the cap. The cap snaps off to reveal the most beautiful part of this pen, the 18 karat gold swooping inlaid nib and the long tapered black plastic section. Let's take a closer look at that gorgeous nib. The curves of this nib and the section are just glorious. As a designer, I'm always thrilled when I see lines, curves, contrasts, negative spaces, and attention to balance. A well-designed fountain pen in the hand and the writing experience it provides is such a deep, visceral experience that the addition of a sublime design aesthetic to that experience makes it almost overwhelmingly beautiful. Look at this nib straight on and see how the curve of the outside of the of the nib hides the black of the section until that gold curve narrows slightly and the black curve reveals itself behind. It is like looking at the endlessly fascinating Nautilus Fibonacci curves. Then the gold curves swoop inward to parallel points before the dramatic inner curve providing the negative space and the gust of wind filling that spinnaker sail. It's just stunning. There's no breather hole and there's that hexagonal double check W Waterman logo right in the center at the bottom of the slit. And it says 18K on one side and 750 on the other side, denoting the gold content of 75%. Turning slowly, we see the tip of the nib has a slight downturn, a marked contrast to the upswoop of the Targa's gold nib. Here's the Targa, 14 karat gold nib. You can see that slight upturn, whereas the Karen has that slight downturn. We'll have to wait to see how that downturn nib feels on the page. On the back of the section, 
you can just see there's an F there for fine, just above that filler hole. And that's where the, the feed gets its ink. The medium will be marked with an M, but the broad is marked with an L for large, not B for broad or even G for grande, the French. Weird. I'm French! Why do you think I have this outrageous accent, you silly king? Just below that is the ink filling hole. There's a good distance between the end of the nib and this opening, so shallow ink bottles could be a problem. The cap posts deeply and securely and points to another excellent design feature of this pen, the balance. This pen balances beautifully, either posted or unposted. It feels just amazing in the hand. That clutch ring right there for the snap cap isn't obtrusive at all. And the section, even though it looks slender, has plenty of girth right here where you grip it. It's actually close to 11 millimeters in diameter right here. I like sections that are at least 10 millimeters in diameter. The Targa is about nine millimeters nine and a half millimeters, something like that, right there where I grip it. And my Pilot E95S is around 10 millimeters, right there where I grip it. This grip on the Karen actually gets close to what I'd imagine the Schaefer PFM and Legacy models feel like. Very, very comfortable. And the weight of this pen, the balance of the weight of this pen sits right there. It's, it's just like they designed it that way. Who knew? No, don't be stupid. There is a cap liner right in there. So that should help keeping that nib wet and keep it from drying out. The barrel unscrews to reveal the end of the section, which is gold-plated metal and has a couple of O-rings. One of those seals the barrel to the section. I can feel it when I close the, the barrel. It, uh, it gets a little bit tight there, so you can know it's sealed against ink leakage. But there's another one there, and I'm not sure what that does. Um, I know the section comes apart right here, but I'm not going to do it as I have to return this untouched. I think it might have something to do with getting at the feed, and also helps align the barrel with the nib. When you close this, that end or stern of the barrel aligns with the nib every single time. That is true attention to detail. A Waterman branded cartridge converter is included, along with a long standard international cartridge of blue ink. If you have short international cartridges, they will fit in this section, and a second one will fit into the barrel piggyback. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Waterman Karen with my vintage Schaefer Targa and my Pilot E95S, a Parker 45 and a Parker Sonnet. Now let's look at the posted. Here they are posted and you can see a variety of inlaid and semi-hooded nibs here. It's hard to judge which of the top three are the most beautiful. I would say the Targa and the E95 have a lot of competition here. All three are gold, but the Karen is 18 karat gold, whereas these two are 14 karat. The Parker 45, of course, is a steel nib here, but it is available and more common, actually, with a gold nib. All five pens post exceptionally well, with the E95 being the slickest and nicest feeling pen to uncap and post. The Sonnet is a really well-balanced pen when posted. And the nib is very cool, but the section is quite thin. Now let's look at some measurements, and I'll be back to sum up my first impressions of the Karen.
Okay, here we are with the Karen. We've looked at its parts and features. Without inking and writing with the pen, I can already draw some conclusions. There are a ton of things to like, in fact, love about this pen. I'm going to start with the price, because if it wasn't for the price, I wouldn't be holding it. The regular price for this pen is around $250 US, which is around $340 Canadian. I paid around that price for my Visconti Van Gogh. I think it was about $320 or so Canadian. And that's way too much for a number five steel nib and a metal section. I didn't know a lot about relative values of these pens a year and a half ago when I bought the Visconti. I simply would not pay that kind of price for even this gorgeous gold nib, knowing what I know now about fountain pens. But I got this pen for $126 Canadian, or around $92 US. That's an incredible price for what I'm getting with this pen. That's 62% off the retail selling price of this pen. And it came with free 48-hour delivery to my door. Plus, I can exchange the nib for free, and it comes with a five-year warranty. You just can't do better than that. Now let's forget the price and just look at this pen overall. This is a work of art. Just the blend of design and engineering alone make it a marvel. But in the hand, it is just pure butter. Talk amongst yourselves. Everything about it is elegant. The balance, the look, the way it posts. The fact that it is a metal pen just seems to dissolve away when I hold it. It will be tough to part with. I'm hoping that the turnaround will be quick. It's going to go UPS, so perhaps it'll be only a week or 10 days or so. I'm hoping when it comes back as a medium and I ink it up, I will add the quality of the writing experience to the list of superlatives I've used in describing it here. I know that if the nib isn't perfect, Waterman will make it right. I'm very impressed here. Now, let's speculate on ink choices for this pen. This will give me an opportunity to show off my new ink swatch control system. I bought myself a Rolodex. I stole this idea from someone in one of my Facebook fountain pen groups. Whoever you are, thank you for my new Doug patented ink swatch system, TM. I got this Rolodex from Staples and just added my test cards with a, a paper clip. I'm going to add labels to the sections for the various color groups like black and grays, red and browns, green, turquoise, blue, etc., etc. So I can just pull out the ink that I want and pull out the test card and I have a really nice indexing system. So what to select as options? Here are the amber, brown, reddish brown inks. I have available at the moment. In no particular order, we have Robert Oster Muddy Wine. I love the muddy selection of Robert Oster inks. And here's the Robert Oster Asterkiza Rot, which is German for red. Diamine Ancient Copper. I love this ink. Robert Oster Another Muddy. Only this is a muddy dragon. This is a, a nice dark red. Robert Oster Muddy Sand. Robert Oster, Golden. You see, I have a lot of Robert Osters. They're all samples. Mont Blanc, Toffee Brown. Je Urbain, Carube de Chypre. This might be a selection because it uh, allows me to speak French. Speak French to me, pen. You spoke French. <laughs> later, later. Mrs. Dragwater and I have a lot to discuss. Oh. Pardon me. <laughs> it has a lot of really nice gold fleck in it as well. Yeah, I like that. And last but not least, KWZ Aztec Gold IG. This is an Iron Gall ink. So those are my selections of inks. That's what I have in stock right now. I'll put up my poll on my YouTube community tab with these inks listed. If there's an ink you think should be here that isn't there, please leave a comment about which ink you suggest. The highest poll votes will win, and I'll either use that ink or procure it, if possible. 
and complete this review with a writing sample when the pen returns from France. If it returns from France, that is. I shall not return. And there you have it. The Waterman Karen. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.